Hello YouTube. I was going to go over some of the truth and fiction behind a lot of the RFID implant chips and so on that's been talked about in conspiracy world. You've probably heard about people getting RFID implants that will track them all over the globe using GPS or so on and so forth. Well, I want to show you why that's actually a bunch of bunk in my opinion. This is actually one of the original Verichip readers. I've made another video that featured this. And Verichip was the company that, back in the early 2000s, was the first to come up with the first FDA-approved human implantable microchip. They've been implanting microchips in dogs and cats so they can be returned to their owners for the last 25-30 years. But it wasn't until the early 2000s that they started offering this and the conspiracy world blew up, obviously. And rightly so, because at first thought you think that's actually pretty scary. But I want to show you why it's not. Here's the chip embedded in this little keychain. And here is another style in the open. You can see just how tiny that is. And I want to show you why this is not GPS and people saying that it is are full of it. First off, to read this chip, the reader's now in scan mode. See? And then there's the number. Let's see. It's just uh, like a 16 digit ID number. Here it is again. It has to be within about an inch or two of this reader to read. So, this chip is what they call passive, meaning it's a coil of wire, a capacitor, and the chip itself that contains the ID number. In order to power this up, the reader has to be so close to it to send out an electromagnetic field that powers this chip passively, and then the chip responds with its ID number. There are no batteries or, or any kind of power source in this chip, or these either. Most proximity key fobs and stuff work the same way. There are no batteries, they're powered off the reader. So the reader has to be extremely close, once again, for it to read. GPS, on the other hand, works by triangulating its position off of the Global Positioning System satellites, as well as satellites from other countries, such as Galileo, Beidou, and so on and so forth, and using those satellites' known positions to triangulate its position. GPS in and of itself can't tell, can't send its location, rather, to somewhere else. Like your handheld GPS receiver shows you where it is, but it's not broadcasting that back to the satellite. GPS trackers, like you might put in a car, like a fleet vehicle or something, rely on a cellular modem or some other kind of two-way communications to send the GPS coordinates to a base station or to your cell phone or whatever. Most GPS trackers are at least the size of this. This is a tire pressure sensor, but they're going to have a battery and an antenna and a GPS antenna and likely a SIM card. They're not going to be much smaller than this. I mean, you're not going to fit a GPS tracker into something this small that's going to be able to be put under someone's skin. That's because GPS, the signals from the satellites are relatively weak. You need a big antenna on the GPS receiver to be able to actually pick up those signals. Even my nice Garmin receivers do not work well in really dense foliage. The accuracy drops to 20 or 30 feet, which isn't bad, but it does drop. Human skin, being that our bodies are like 80% water, is going to block that signal even more. And with no power source, even if this somehow could pick up the GPS signals, the signal itself is not going to be powerful enough to activate this chip. And with no cellular connection, the chip can't send its location anywhere. So that's really groundless. Another thing is the government isn't going to waste time implanting people with chips or nanobots or whatever whenever everyone already carries one of these around. And I'm not going to get into how you can track a cell phone, but there are plenty of information out there on that. Whether it's via the Bluetooth or the Wi-Fi or what have you. Triangulating the signal through the towers. You've already carry a tracker on you 
some of us 24-7. Now, I'm not advocating getting rid of your cell phone. I'm just saying it is what it is. So, they're not going to be implanting people with chips whenever we already willingly have a way for them to do it, if you're even a person of interest. So, most of us, they probably don't give a shit. But, that is what it is. I thought I would make this video just to show that the... You see it in movies. Oh, they were implanted with a GPS tracker, and it's something like the size of this. It's bull. It's not going to work. It doesn't have any power source of its own, and it's impractical. The people that have GPS trackers are usually like convicted felons and stuff like that that are on a um, court-mandated, uh, what do you call it, house arrest, and they have a GPS ankle thing, ankle tracker, and it's roughly about that size from the ones I've seen. So... Yeah, it needs a cellular modem or Wi-Fi or something in order to send the location of the satellites back to someone else. So, in and of itself, the tracker can't do much without that unless it's one that you retrieve at the end of the day and then pull the log out of it. So, really, the whole chip thing, it's nothing to be afraid of. It's not going to happen. It's not the threat that it was made out to be, and honestly this very chip company didn't even exist anymore. They've gone out of business, they were bought up by someone else, and it's just, it is what it is. Plus, if you put stuff like that in people, they're just going to take it out. I mean, it's not going to work. So, I just thought I'd make that video. Thanks for watching, and if you want one of these, there may still be some on eBay. The guy I bought this from had like 50 of them, so... You can get one and play with it, and it comes with a little keychain thing, too, so there you go. Thanks for watching.